and I'm here just for a brief moment to talk a little bit about John and also because Rachel guilted me into coming over here to talk about him. Am I on? How oh, darn it, Ryan, you're supposed to give me the three, two, one. Action! Love! Love! Love will keep us together! Together! Every time I go to Jake Schneider's house, we miss him! You would always tell me to eat my food I didn't want his bone. I never knew he was even in the picture. <laughs> One day he said to me, I'd like to marry your daughter, and I went, what? I told him, I said, I'm fixing to go to Australia. Can you wait? He said about a nanosecond. Rachel and I would always conjure a project up when we knew John was traveling. So, the, really what happened was, I would really never met John. I, I just saw his name on the checks a lot of times. And my favorite one was, it's 4th of July week, and Rachel always goes to Palm Desert. And so, here's this great old, we're destroying the whole upstairs, beds are in other rooms because we're re-carpeting, and I'm with the carpet guys, and this man comes in, and I just thought maybe it was a neighbor wondering what we were doing and if everything was okay at Rachel and John's. And I said, sir, hi, how are you? And he goes, what are you doing in my house? And I said, oh. Well, I'm re-carpeting for the Schneiders and, and, and everything's going okay, who are you? And he goes, I'm John Schneider. And I went, oh, did you not know we were carpeting? And he goes, no. I said, maybe you should call your wife. After a couple of rooms and we're moving things, I said, John, do you want to help or do you want me to stay? And he goes, no, you should go now. He and I had long talks on the phone about how he was getting into this green. And he was like, how did you ever do that? I mean, from Peterbilt trucks to now you're the green expert and learning about the government. John, come up, really? I think one of the stories that I always tell about John is... John told me one time, he said, Opa, I got one word for you. And I said, what is that, John? And he said, you're obsolete. <laughs> Think of me, babe, whatever, whatever. Some sweet talking girl comes along. Rachel, I think that you guys have really, <laughs> you guys have been, stop that. <laughs> but I remember he had kind of, long hair for a while but when I looked in the yearbook in his senior picture he has a beard and I remember vividly like how does anybody have a beard when they're in high school how old is this guy really we got to know him more and more and we, we found out about this secretive person called Rachel <laughs> <laughs> and we always knew when Rachel was involved with whether or not they had food and do you have a knife to cut the mold off <laughs> When I first met John, is he actually didn't know my real name. He met me as Shanane. And then he came to know me as Shanano, because if you drink a little bit, you're Shanano. Singing a song, don't mess around, you just gotta be strong, you stop. We met him, uh, he went up front the next night or something like that, and he was having problems with the boat. And some of the people in the power squadron said that, where were you parked last night? Because the boat was vibrating. And they said, he parked in the back, and he said, well, the back dock people, I think, uh, stole your prop, and it was a big story. He came back to us and said, I know you guys didn't do that. Come on. The real reason that John stuck with us is because we stole this prop. Yeah. <laughs> I married John, and then Are you gave him, him to Rachel. Confess it, Mom. And Confess it, Mom. And I love the beard, and it, look at, oh, I love younger men. <laughs> After I couldn't keep him, he went to Rachel. <laughs> What's your deal? Where's the line? Well, you still have stuff in your book. Wait, I'm the only one that did it. Oh, oh wow. Well, I guess I, guess I should do it too. <sighs> but it's a, it was a shot, I thought. Because I really love you. Stop. <laughs> I like thinking of you. Keep love in my heart and let love. I remember John called me one time. He's uh, in town, in town, coming to Maryland. He said, Uncle Sonny, I'm going to stay with you tonight. Come over to the house. He said that we reminisced all night long. We drank everything we had in the bar. <laughs> at 5 o'clock in the morning, we went to bed. I got him up at 6 o'clock. He ate a egg sandwich and put him at the door. And he was headed to the airport. <laughs>
<laughs> and, he'll, and he'll never forget that. The, the thing with John is, you know, he'd come across as a. Uh, sometimes he'd come across as very crusty, very gruff, very. Um, not angry, but like irritated. And he only did that because he loved his family so much. You know, it just, it was almost a way to get a rise out of Rachel. Well, I was looking after him with Omar here for the last six months or so. He asked me, he said, and quit eating my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. And let love keep us together. When I We're here for you. So I just want to say first and foremost that John was one of the most amazing people that I think I've come across. And when I see and I think about John and Rachel together, they inspire me as a couple with such passion and love and connectedness. And to see what they have or had is something that I hope one day I can find because it's beautiful. Everybody that seen him, knew him, was around him, loved him. He was just that kind of a person. John was a, uh, a very special friend, a very special person to me. Uh, I was really lucky in that I got to spend the time with him in more of a, uh, not only a personal relationship, but a business relationship. Unbelievably passionate about his family. Uh, he was a uh, just a spectacular dad. Uh, challenged his kids, he loved his kids to death and uh, really challenged them to do uh, amazing things. I will always be thankful for his time and for his patience with me and and, uh, and he taught me a, a, a few things in, in terms of humility and uh, of being being just a better person. He was so gracious and he was so thoughtful of others and I have a bazillion stories. I have a bazillion photos over the last 24 years. You know, he'll always have a place in my heart. Adored his boys and adored Rachel and he was just a, a great guy. I really came to know and love him as my brother and uh, I will always, always be very thankful that uh, he allowed me in his home to be a to be a part of his family. I, I guess if there's one message I could leave to whoever's watching this, um, John and Jake, particularly John and Jake, is you know your, your father was an incredible human being. He had more character and moral spirit than most people I know. And you know I know he's gone, but if you follow his path, you follow his philosophies of passion, you know, uh, strength and courage, and, and you listen to your father and his words, I, I think it'll take you a long way in life. And Here's to everybody who has a passion yeah. for life. Yeah. A passion for life. John, to John. John. We to love John. him. Love you. You know, I think your message would be that, uh, you know, John and I spent a lot of time those Thanksgivings, you know, spent a lot of time talking and, you know, John really loved his wife, really loved his kids. Um, I know, you know, as this thing progressed, he just, you know, really, really, you know, was, you know, just really, really wanted to leave them, I guess, in a good place. And I, I guess I just want them to know that he really, really cared for them and, um, and really, really loved them very, very much. I would say to the boys and to Rachel, he was one hell of a guy that we all in the boating area thought a lot of him. We loved him, we respect him. Uh, I just, I just so sad to see him gone because he was so great out there. We had so much fun with him. All these people in this video all love you, all are here to support you, and we're going to be here for whatever part of the journey you need us for. Just let us know. I love you very much, and the boys, you know you will always have the strength of our family and the family 
to rely on and to draw on and that we will always be here for each and every one of you. And uh, just thank you for, for all, all the things you've done for me and, and I hope I've been able to give a little bit back. I guess the only thing I can really say is that I know they're in good hands. Uh, Rachel's a wonderful woman. And we love John and we'll miss him. What would I want to tell you about John, the man that I was married to for 24 years? Seriously? Um, he was a fabulous guy. That Total opposites. Total opposites. That's They say opposites tracked, and I think we did that very, very well. Um, you know what? John was... Uh, mm, let me think about this for a minute. Uh, he was uh, sensitive. He was logical, very analytical, and always had to have a plan. And I really don't operate well that way. Um, so we had we had some fun. We had some major fun. Um, and he dragged me all over. I got to be the traveling spouse. From we met in Dallas through his mom, which I'm sure you've already heard that story about how we met. So we went from Dallas to Philadelphia, King of Prussia, which I actually thought was across the sea. I thought Prussia was next to Russia. I found out differently though. Philadelphia might as well be. But anyway, okay, so then it was Seattle, and then San Francisco, and then back to Dallas, and then to Chicago, and then back to Dallas, and I thought we were done! Oh, but no, we had to make one more move. Woo, to Minnesota, yes! I was so excited, really? Oh, I know, there's the cheering section for Minnesota, really? But you know what? Oh, all good, all good. And I will tell you that um, with that job and with that responsibility and with that move, John absolutely just, he hit, he hit the high with, with everything. And it's... It was. Um, it's been a good time here. He's he was a great, great dad, um, and you know he just really. Once we got this this diagnosis, I think we were able to really put our world in perspective, and um, you know this was a this has been a journey. And we knew it when we started 24 years ago, and it was this wasn't exactly how we thought it would end. But what I do know is that John finished well, just like he did with everything. He really did it well, and um, and we did it together. So no regrets. This is exactly how John would have wanted it on the water. A beautiful night, a beautiful day. 80 degrees in Minnesota in October. Seriously? When does that happen? So, yeah, it's like Dallas. I know. Trying to get me to think that I'm in Dallas? Okay. But I do. I'm getting there. So I would just have to say that, you know, um, we had a great, we had a great, great time together. And I just get a lot of comfort knowing that um, that he's just in a really good good place and um, that will bring us joy and we have the legacy of John the third and little Jake and um, yes and I am just I don't know that I'm looking forward to the teenage years but it doesn't matter because we're there anyway so um, I have a lot of good friends and um, and I know that we have a lot of good support so it's just um, it's just been terrific, and uh, and I will I will miss him, but um, we'll continue to honor his memory in everything that I do. So I didn't hear the story how you guys met. You didn't? <laughs> Stop it! I swear. Oh come on, Ryan! Yeah, seriously? You didn't hear the story? Oh come on, Ryan! Mm. He wasn't listening. Mm. Big on that. Oh my gosh! Okay, so here's the story because I tell it the best and I tell it the right way okay because John has a totally had a totally different to that's right he doesn't he doesn't so okay I was selling advertising space in Dallas Texas and his mom was the marketing director of the Latour which was the newest high-rise 
So here I go, little sales executive. I go and I call on Elaine, little Elaine, sitting behind a really big desk at the top of a really tall building. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, I know, I know, she knows, she knows. And I walk, in, and I walk in there with all my stuff, and she's behind this really big desk, and in the middle of my pitch, okay, this is our magazine, this is what we can do for you. She looks right at me and she goes, are you dating anybody? <laughs> And I said to myself, I said to myself, is this going to help me close this deal? Let me think. Am I dating anybody? No, I'm not dating anybody. I'm not dating anybody. Great. My son just moved here from Houston, and I would really like for you to meet him. And I'm like, hmm, okay, great. You know, if this is part of the sales cycle. I don't remember this in the pitch, but okay, fine. Okay, well, he's going to be here. I'll call you, da 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 and I'm like, okay, if this is going to help me sell a four-color full-page spread for 12 issues, I'm good for it. Okay, so I leave there, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later, I get this phone call. Now, my parents had come to town, and when my parents came to town, you know, when you're in college, you, you just, or you're working, young, single, you stay at home with your parents, right? You don't let them see the other world, right? I got this phone call. I'm having this party, and my son's going to be here. He just moved here and I'd really like for you to come. I'm like, okay, she's a client, all right, potential client, I gotta go. So here I go to this party. Mom and Dad, I'll be back, promise, no worries, I'm coming back. So I get to this party, now Elaine's living in Highland Park, you know, that's a really nice section of Dallas, really big house, and you know, margarita machine, everything's going on, right? No, okay, so... So I get there, and it's, I don't know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, I arrive on time, beautiful party, everything's happening, and I'm meeting everybody, hi, this is, oh, Elaine, she's perfect, oh, Elaine, she's great, she's great, oh, yeah, just great, just, I'm like, what are they talking about, you know, okay, whatever, I'm here to meet her son, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. It's 8.30, it's 9 o'clock, it's 9.30, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, really? I think I've, like, worn out my welcome now. I got to go. I don't know where he is. That's okay. So in the meantime, John has come home. He's found his way home because John, being new to Dallas, Elaine had set him up with some friends of hers who had sons so that they could go out and show John Dallas, right? So they showed John Dallas with a little bit of this and a little bit of that and whatever. Okay, which, right? Not John, Mr. Buttoned Up, Peterbilt? I don't think so. But anyway, okay. And Mr. Analytical. So. Hippie. Oh, you hippie. just call her hippie. I was hippie. Yeah. Meanwhile, this one is upstairs. He's getting in the shower. He's getting in the shower. And I know Cheryl just can't even believe that I ever even heard this, but I did. John's up there like, give me the story. What's with this chick downstairs? Because I'm still waiting. And Cheryl says to him, well, she's a little hippie. And not meaning hippie, meaning wide hippie, all right? I only learned that years, years later. So anyway, he comes down there, he comes down there, and he is wearing, and I'm not kidding, he's wearing shorts and a muscle shirt and his Varney sunglasses at 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock at night. Now this was when that song, Corey, whatever, I wear my sunglasses at night. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'm like, I don't know who you think you are, but here he comes and he goes, hi, I'm, you know, I'm John Schneider. I go, you know what? You should be really lucky that I'm still here to meet you. I have to go now. Hi, I'll see you later. I was just done. I was like, really? You've got your sunglasses on? It's 10 o'clock at night, and I have been waiting on this? Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not impressed. And so, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, okay, but you know what? I still got this this deal that could be done. So I'm like, all right, all right. 
<laughs> I'm like, okay. So he That's looks at me. I go, I gotta go. I gotta go. My mom and dad are still at home, right? I gotta go. It's 10:30. I gotta go. So he goes, well, let me walk you out to the car. And I'm like, no, you don't need to walk me out to the car. He goes, no, I'll at least walk you out to the car. Well, I'm glad he could still walk. I mean, but anyway, he walked me out to the car. <laughs> Man, I was in a, I must have been in a mood. And he looked at me. I go, if you think you're gonna kiss me goodnight, forget it. And I think he just went, like, God, really? All I, really? Okay. So, kudos to John. Two days later, he calls me up and he goes, um, do you think maybe I could take you out? And I go, really? Uh, well, let me just, maybe we could just, you know, I, I know I kept you away, blah, 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 blah. I don't know exactly what he said, but I thought, okay. So he agreed. I agreed. So he shows up at my door a week later or whatever wearing his nice shirt, tie, pants, the whole nine yards. And I open up the door and I look at him and I go, you have a job? And that was my opening line. <laughs> Because he came to get me, you know, from work or whatever. I'm like, you have a job? Because, you know, I'd seen him in a shirt and a, really? So anyway, and after that, I can't, I mean, we had a, we had a great first date. And, uh, yeah, I guess something just connected and that was, and really that was Rachel, it. did you get the account? Did I get, the, no, I never got the deal. <laughs> So, so you know, but you know it's good when Elaine picked me up for lunch one day. She was taking me out for my birthday, I think, and she took me to lunch, and I never will forget it. She came and she picked me up, and she goes, I just want you to know, if things don't work out with my son, I still want us to be friends. And I'm like, okay, there you have it. So, um, that's a really long story, Ryan, and I know... Uh, you'll do good with that. But that's the real version. That is the real version. That's how it really happens. That's how it really happens. So there. Really? Hey, I need an audience. What's going on here? You got, yes. Oh, stop. No, I'm good. Can I be done now? Really? <laughs> all right. Are we good? I didn't really. What's with all these people? Oh, come on. Ryan, really? <laughs> <laughs> are we good? We're good. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I know you've got more people to talk to. I know you have more people to talk to. All right, Rick. Rick, hello. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not gonna sit here and watch you though. I'm not gonna sit here. Up it, up it, up it, up there. I am not. Really? Whose turn is it? Did you guys? Did you guys?